Recording in progress. Good morning. The City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for November 14th, 2023 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March 2025. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. <clears throat> In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists, and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments and opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer a comment and the time for commenting as the time as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the board who are most impacted by a project, that is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go, go down. When the host sees your hand, you receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon to comment will, will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Stembridge reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. Okay, uh, Mr. Stembridge. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning, uh, Mr. Valencia. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning, Mr. Langham. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning, Ms. Beta Barraza. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning, Mr. Aiken. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Excellent. Uh, I will turn it over to Mr. Stembridge, but first I will just note that uh, this today's, uh, today is a six member board. Okay. Um, first, we will start off with the extension scheduled for 9.30 a.m. I'll read them into, I'll read the pertinent information into the record and ask the applicants to explain. First, we have case BOA 1100107 with the address of 5 Oakhurst Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain the situation? Yes, thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the applicant, we are seeking a one-year extension of the permit um, just due to financing. Uh, my client um, took a little bit of time uh, to get through BPDA design process and now uh, was delayed because of uh, financing to construct the project, but now is able to move forward with that. Uh, the permits have not, uh, we're just expiring this month, um, so we are seeking that one-year extension. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Make a motion to grant the extension for one year. To November 13, 2024. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Better Braza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 9521523 with the address of 353 Baker Street. 
Is the applicant and or the representative present for the point? Um, yes, I am present. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is O'Brien Stadhard, uh, represent um, 353 on um, Baker Street. We are um, asking for one year extension. There was a misunderstanding. There was a request to convert the property from one to a two um, family residence. And the reason for the, con the confusion was we were checking the system assessing department and they were reflecting that the property was re uh, represented as a two family. Where after further research, we found out that the information on assessors department was incorrect. So the pretty much the permit was just sitting there in limbo. So once we found that out, we pretty much found that we needed to get an extension to correct the problem. Okay. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I make a motion to, to grant the extension to November 13th. 2024? 2024. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stambridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Mr. Aitken? Yes. Chair Austin votes yes. This motion carries. Good luck. Thanks. Next, we have case BOA. 527141 with the address of 100 Stewart Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Chair of members of the board, Chris Rainier from Goulston and Stores uh, with the business address of 400 Atlantic Ave. Uh, here before you on behalf of Orange Barrel Media. Um, here for a, a request for confirmation of application of the COVID Permit Extension Act to the zoning decision. The zoning decision was granted back in uh, December of 2015, and that was the date of the board hearing. Uh, the, the decision has an eight year uh, term, uh, but the COVID Extension Act uh, applied uh, to this permit, uh, which was in effect as of March 2020. Uh, so we're requesting the board confirm application of the COVID Extension Act to extend the expiration of the decision to March 14, 2025 which is the length of the uh, permit extent or length of the state of emergency. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from the board? Question from Javier. Can we grant the extension for more than a year from now? Yes, uh, uh, board member Valencia, yes, we can. Uh, this is in particular though for uh, the COVID tolling provision, but yes, you can it, approve for an extension more than a year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Sorry, Madam Chair, I also have a question. Javier, we have some different dates. Um, for yes. I'm trying to reconcile that. Yes, the, the applicant submitted uh, for the date uh, for March. Um, they were being conservative with the date as the date of the hearing uh, when they heard in December 2016. It's actually the date of filing, uh, which was in January 29th. So from that day, it's actually May, um, uh, May, 5th. Yeah, May 5th, 2025 would be the COVID extension date. Thank you. Okay. Great. So I can make a motion to yes. approve an extension, uh, confirm the relief, and uh, I'll make a motion to confirm the relief is valid and the extension until May 5th of 2025. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Better Braza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to the board final arbiters hearing scheduled for 9.30. First, we have case BOA 1514330 with the address of 21 Holston Street. Uh, I believe it will be Attorney Drago or, or represent, as a representative yes. to explain. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago, with Drago and Toscano at the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the applicant of 21 Holton Street, um, with me I also have Chris Drew, who's the architect on the project. Just by way of background, for some of the members that may have not um, be familiar with the case. This was to change the occupancy from an existing three unit building to five condominium units, renovate it and add two uh, rear additions. Uh, it also included nine parking spaces in the rear of the property access through uh, an existing driveway. Um, we, as we went through community process, we Parking was uh, one of the most important issues that the community wanted to see uh, just because of limitations in that area for off-street parking. So we added the, the nine spaces. By doing that and all the changes that we made, we reduced the variance needed for just um, the use, the MFR use. So all of our other violations <clears throat> that were originally there um, had gone away. So we just had the one MFR use when we went through the presentation and uh, did receive support from this board, there were a number of provisos that were placed on the decision. Um, and we can comply with, with all of them except one is why we're here. So one was to use permeable materials for the driveway, which we were, we're going to do that. Uh, another one was to plant new trees where a, a, a tree might have to be taken down. We can comply with that. And then in particular, BPDA design review on the massing in the rear and the overhang, which Chris is already working on to comply with. Uh, the concern was the parking. Um, by reducing it, uh, from the nine parking spaces, it creates a parking violation uh, one. So obviously we, we would have to go through the whole process again. Um, and two, that's the, the community had had issues with the parking uh, being reduced. So we were hoping uh, to come back to the board <clears throat> to have that one proviso removed, obviously complying with all the other and maintain uh, the, the nine parking spaces. I can pause to, to answer any questions myself or, or Chris. Thank you, Mr. Drago. Any questions from the board? Are you asking a question, Ms. Bedebraza? No, I, I don't have any questions. Um, okay. I, I have comments, but I think mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll make those comments when I'm called upon to put a vote in. Okay. Uh, any other, any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion? No, I have a question. I have my hand up. Uh, this is, we're speaking to the board at this moment. Yeah, but you're going to head and vote. Are we ready? Is, every, is anyone ready to make a motion? Um, Madam Chair, this is Javier. Just for the board's clarify. The board doesn't need to take public testimony at, for a BFA. Um, this is just for a diminished change to the project, so it's up to the board whether to take public testimony or not. Okay. Hearing no questions from the board, is there a motion? I need a motion or a question. <laughs> I'll put forward a motion. Okay, thank um, you. If, if no one's putting a motion forward. My, so I had the opportunity to review the hearing um, that took place on September 26th of this year. And um, I believe that the proviso should stand as it is, even if, if it means that it would create a new violation and would require the applicant to come back before the board and seek the relief for parking. Um, as we all know, we like to hear everything in the round. And at that hearing, I recall, the BPDA's recommendation was to put forward a denial without prejudice. And they were citing a lack of open space. BT, we heard from BTD, and they also recommended a removal of two parking spaces. Even if we were to do the recommendation of BTD, you would still have a violation of parking. You know, so 
um, it went from nine to potentially seven with BTD and the board put for a motion of reducing it to five um, parking spaces. So with that, I would like to um, deny the motion. Is there a second? Dr. Mr. Stembridge. Uh, no. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Bedefraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes, I can support that motion. The chair votes uh, yes, the motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 113-7713 with the address of 375 Cummins Highway. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney John Pulgini on behalf of the applicant for 375 Cummings um, Highway. With me this morning is Rick Schmidt, who is the project architect. Um, by, way history, sorry, by way of history, uh, 375 Cummings was initially approved by the BPDA and then by this board in January of 21. The approvals were then um, purchased by the new applicant and upon meeting with the BPDA staff to redesign the proposal, a notice of project change was filed. The goal of that change was to increase open space and limit the parking to a reasonable number. Initially, um, the BPD approved up to 61 off-street parking spaces, but the Zoning Board of Appeals decision actually had the hard number 61, didn't use the up to language. Um, the current redesign amends the parking up to 44 parking spaces and really makes this a better project from an aesthetic, environmental, and community perspective. Uh, that was uh, approved by the uh, BPDA board in May of this year. Um, with the help of the BPDA design st uh, BPDA staff, we were able to reduce the FAR, reduce the height, increase open space by over 7,000 square feet, increase setbacks, and pro provide significant public domain improvements, including uh, together working with the Public Improvements Commission and the MBTA, we're looking to relocate a bus shelter from where its current position is to a better location, and also we're installing a new bus um, station and shelter uh, for the neighborhood. There will be a financial contribution to both walk up Rosendale and the parks and voluntary adding another uh, affordable unit to the proposal. Um, and we were able to do this without any uh, triggering any violations that we didn't previously have. At this point, I'm going to turn over to Rick Schmidt, the team architect, just to quickly show you, walk through the redesign so you can see the changes and we're here to answer any questions. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Rick Schmidt, my uh, business address is 78 Walcott Road, uh, Brookline. Uh, here's a view of what was approved in 2021. And if we go to the next slide uh, during our design development um, and uh, meetings with uh, uh, BPDA design staff, uh, we s slightly reduced the footprint of the building uh, look to keep the design ideas much the same um, and as a result of uh, compressing the footprint somewhat uh, we ended up uh, with four stories of brick facing Cummins Highway and if we were to go to the next slide um, you'll see that the points that John made are that we keep the same amount of units we've slightly reduced the FAR we've increased our open space uh, we have reduced the height of the building, and as a result of compacting the footprint of the building, we increased our rear yard setback, and we've increased the uh, amount of uh, affordable units from six to seven. If we go to the next slide, you'll see a comparison of the two. Uh, actually, this is a, a view of what we're proposing from Stop and Shop. Um, and then if we go to the slide, app, well, one more slide after that. Um, there's a comparison of the two, um, really much of the same uh, articulation, uh, private balconies for a majority of the units, uh, mixture of materials that was appropriate uh, in our discussions with the BPDA board, the increase in the amount of masonry fronting Cummins Highway we thought was appropriate. Um, vehicles enter and exit the site in much the same way as originally shown in 2021. 
And then if we go to the next slide, um, this is the site. Cummins Highway is at the top of the page. To the right is Stop and Shop property. On the lower portion of the page is American Legion Highway. Um, and if we go to the next slide, you'll see this is the site plan that was approved in 2021. Uh, the area in the building um, is in the lower left of the site that was compressed. And if we go to our next slide, you'll see our footprint. Uh, there's a pretty steep slope in the rear. So that's where we compacted the footprint. Um, and the access to the building as far as pedestrians or vehicles is very much the same as what was shown in 2021. Um, and that compression of the footprint ends up uh, improving the FAR and open space slightly. And uh, I believe that's it. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, Thank you. Questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I do have a quick question for them, Chair. I just, I just want to clarify the parking space piece. It's, it's the revision that has been approved by the BPDA is the Article 80 is up to 44 spaces. Is that? That's correct. correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yep. okay. I thought I just saw something on the slide there that had 25 spaces, yep. but maybe that was about a, a reduction. There, there, there's a discussion in there of, of what is put on slab and then what is with parkers, uh, stackers. That makes up the difference. To 44. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put for a motion of approval. May I have a second? Take one. Second. Okay. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Betabraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries. Good Thank night. you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have case BOA 1337499 with the address of 40 to 42 Cross Street. Is the applicant and the representative present to explain to the board? Yes, Mr. Secretary. Please proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Johanna Schneider. I'm with the law firm of Himalay and Barnes in Boston. I'm here on behalf of Cross Street Ventures. We are here today seeking a correction of the decision issued by this board in September 2022, granting zoning relief for the development of a 134 key boutique hotel situated on the edge of the North End and immediately adjacent to the Rose Kennedy Greenway. Madam Ambassador, do you have access to our slides that we submitted? And if you could pull them up. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just show the board to refresh your recollection, slides three and four. These are a couple of images of the hotel project, which you did approve last year. This case was heard by the board in August of 2022. And I believe a few of you sat on this case. So you may recall some of the history that I'm going to provide as background. Between the time that we received ISD's refusal letter right up until that August 2022 hearing, we contested certain zoning violations for which we were cited. And these were violations with respect to the height of the building. We documented our position in a written memo submitted to this board and raised it again at the hearing, but the board declined to weigh in on the legal question underlying our objection. It instead granted both a conditional use permit and variances pursuant to Article 5413 and 5418 of the code. We've continued to work with ISD in the interim, and I think we've gotten to a place with our plans examiner where he understands our position and was willing to refer us to you um, as final arbiter. The reason that we continue to press this is that the ZBA's approval has been appealed, and we are currently in a position where we are defending variances that we believe we did not need in the first place. If the board agrees with us, it does not eliminate the litigation, but it would narrow the issues for trial. So now I'm going to jump into a discussion of the variances and code provisions at issue. I apologize in advance, it's dense, it's a little boring, but please bear with me. And if you need to interrupt me with questions along the way, please don't hesitate to do so. Um, I'd like to start by taking a look at slide six, which is the language of um, section 5418. 
Um, and this is the height limitation language of the code. And let's go on to slide seven for a deeper dive into what this language says. So section 5418 paragraph four looks at two things. The first is what was the height of any existing building on the site as of June 24th, 1985. If the proposed project exceeds that height, then a conditional use permit is required. And we know that this is the correct path because earlier this year, the Massachusetts Appeals Court issued a decision in another North End zoning appeal in which it upheld this board's determination that only a conditional use permit is required to exceed the June 1985 height limitation. And the second question is whether the proposed building exceeds the applicable height limit. And if it does, then a dimensional variance is required. So now onto the next slide, I'd like to talk about how this analysis works for the hotel project. There is absolutely no question that the hotel exceeds the height of the one story building that was on the site in 1985. And the board in its decision last year granted a conditional use permit under section 5418. And we don't at all contest that that was required and appropriate. Where our issue comes in is in the calculation of height for the project. Article two of the code provides that building height for a building with a flat roof like this one is measured as the vertical distance from grade to the highest point of the roof beams. And as you can see from the dimensioned elevations on slide nine, at both Cross Street and Wharton Street, the height of this building measured from grade to the highest point of the roof beams is 55 feet. And 55 feet is the maximum allowed height for the property as set forth in section 5413 table D, which is the dimensional requirements for the subdistrict. Where I think we and ISD initially disagree is whether certain rooftop equipment should have been included in the height calculation in a way that would cause the building height to exceed 55 feet. The source of that question is section 5418 paragraph three, which deals with roof structure restrictions. And let's take a look at the language there on slide 11, please. Could we, there we go, thank you. What this provision basically says is that roof structures, including head houses and mechanical equipment, do not count toward height unless altogether they comprise more than 10% of the total roof area of the building, if that total roof area is more than 3,300 square feet. In other words, if more than 10% of the roof area is covered with roof structures like head houses and mechanicals, then the height of those structures sets the height of the building. If less than 10% of the roof area is covered with these structures, then the height is calculated without them. So if you take a look at slide 12, you can see the calculation that our architect has done here in accordance with 5418. The total roof area of the hotel is 13,717 square feet. 10% of that is 1,372 square feet. Our architect then tallied up all of the roof structures on the building, which are shown on this plan in green. This included two egress stairs, three elevator head houses, the water room, an elevator vestibule, and an electrical closet. Those together comprise 1,087 square feet. To be conservative, we're also showing certain design and safety elements, which are highlighted in blue hatching on this plan. These are screens and parapets, as well as a building code required safety railing. We don't actually believe that these are roof structures in the way intended in the code. They're certainly quite different from a mechanical penthouse or an elevator penthouse, but we've included them anyway and they comprise another 226 square feet. When you add all of these together, you get 1,313 square feet of roof coverage, which is still below that 10% threshold of 1,372 square feet, which means that per 5418, the height of these rooftop elements does not get included in the calculation of building height for this project. So where does that leave us? Um, Madam Ambassador, if you put forward to slide 13, please. Um, as I said, there is no question that we needed a conditional use permit because the height of the building does indeed exceed the June 24th, 1985 building height. However, because the building height measured to the highest portion of the roof beams does not exceed 55 feet, we did not need a variance from 5413 table D or from paragraph three of 5418. Also, because the roof structures on the building occupy less than 10% of the total roof area, 
the height of those structures is not imputed to the building height, and we're still at 55 feet. So again, no variance is required. What this all means is that the refusal letter for the project erroneously cited it for non-compliance with 5418 and 5413, and these errors were carried forward into the board's decision, which resulted in you granting variances that we did not in fact need. So what we're asking the board to do today, sitting as final arbiter, is to correct the decision to remove the unnecessary dimensional variances for height and to affirm its prior grant of a conditional use permit pursuant to 5418 to allow the project to exceed the one-story building height that was there as of June 24th, 1985. I appreciate the board's patience and attention as I walk through all of these things. I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Ms. Snyder. Questions from the board? Okay, I see a lot of no's. So with that, may I have a motion? Um, Madam Chair, first I want to say this was the clearest <laughs> presentation from a council uh, to the board. So thank you for that. Uh, I want to put forward a motion of approval um, to remove the two previous citation of 5413, 5418, and that it only holds a conditional use variance. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Valencia. Mr. Valencia. Sorry. Yeah. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Benabraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. There also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Schneider. Thank you very much. Next, excuse me. Next, we'll move on to the recommendation from the subcommittee uh, scheduled for 9.30. Um, at this point, though, we have reached um, the 10 o'clock hour. Bear, bear with me. Um, read the answer to. Uh, you can just read the recommendations and then we'll ask. Okay. Um, we'll go on to the recommendation um, for. Um, we start off with case BOA 146684 with the address of 17 Walden, Waldemar Avenue. The, this was approved, proviso of no building code for real relief. Next, we have case BOA 142058 with the address of 6 Essex Street which was approved. Next we have with a proviso case BOA 152279 at the address of 115 Salem Street was approved. Next we had three uh, combined cases, three companion cases, first being case BOA 1452599 with the address of 73 to 75 Causeway Street. Along with that, we have case BOA 1452610 with the address of 31 to 39 Lancaster Street. Then we have case BOA 1452616 with the address of 19 to 21 Lancaster Street. All were approved. Next, we have case BOA 1505773, with the address of 7 Chestnut Street, which was approved with the proviso. Next, we have case BOA 1526460, with the address of 93 to 95 Wellsmere Road, this was approved. Case BOA 1513671, with the address of 1251 to 1269 River Street, was approved. Case BOA 1505081, with the address of 31 Pond View Avenue, was approved. 
Case BOA 1519194 with the address of 22 Sunnybank Road was approved with a proviso. Finally, we have case BOA 1428568 with the address of 84 to 100 River Street was, was approved. And that's the end of the recommendation from the subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Stenberg. May I have a motion? Motion to approve all the recommendations from the subcommittee. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. We'll now move on to the hearing schedule for 9.30 a.m. Uh, at this time, we'll ask if there are any requests for withdrawals or deferrals from this time period. I would also like to uh, remind uh, folks that uh, we are uh, a six-member board today. Okay. Uh, moving forward then, we have, first we have case BOA 151. 8728 with the address of 16 Allstate Road. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain? Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Attorney Nick Sazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, 28 State Street, Suite 802 in Boston. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Ambassador. We do have a presentation if you wouldn't mind pulling it up quickly. Uh, uh, we did submit a presentation, Madam Ambassador. I don't know if you have that or not. If not, that's it's okay. I can run through it fairly quickly. Um, we did submit it. Well, if not, Madam Chair, I will just carry on and do my best. Uh, we did have a nice, pretty presentation for you all that we did submit. Um, no however, thank you <laughs> yeah uh, it, it looked great I promise and we spent a lot of time on it but um, if you scroll down this is just uh, I guess a very basic zoning chart there's not uh, th this could be it there we go thank you very much perfect you saved the day madam ambassador thank you uh, next slide please this is just our team um, Dave this is uh, for the David Ortiz uh, Kia of Boston um, uh, presented by Respect Auto Group, Harrison Gray, President, John Marciano, the Managing Director, are both on today, uh, myself, and then we have our architects from BKA Architects, uh, Keith Betancourt and Nathan Langley uh, as well. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this is just to orient the board to the actual site. Uh, we are located in the South Bay Mall, uh, where this is being proposed. Uh, you can see the big Kia uh, sign on the map. Uh, we are at the far end towards Frontage Road and Allstate Road. Uh, the proposal here is to take over some of the space of the existing Best Buy commercial uh, uh, store, retail store um, in South Bay. Uh, next slide. So brief summary, um, again, this is a new 12,000 square foot end cap tenant space at 16 Allstate Road. Uh, this would be take over some of the space, 12,000 square feet of Best Buy. Best Buy will remain in a newly reduced space. Um, there will be no change to the existing footprint. It will be a, a showroom only, uh, sales only. All parts and service will be off site at a satellite location. Uh, being serviced remotely at 874 Harrison Avenue, a little over a mile away or about a mile and away. So this would just be for uh, sales and a showroom. Uh, you'll see in a minute, it's the, just a typical uh, new Kia prototypical facade, a lot of glass, and it's, the, it's all facing the expressway. Um, there'll be minimal site work, uh, new sidewalks, and then the addition of some EV charging spaces in a parking area. Uh, right off the front, uh, which will also actually be available to the public um, if, if possible. Um, again, you can see that there. And then we'll show you our test drive route, which is proposed to completely avoid the South Bay Mall and the adjacent neighborhoods. 
Uh, next slide. Just to refuse a letter, uh, all we need is four conditional use permits, no variances for this car dealership use. Uh, the four of them you can see here, indoor sale of motor vehicles, outdoor sale of new and used motor vehicles, uh, indoor sale with or without installation of automotive parts, accessories, and supplies, and then a car wash. It's a small one-bay car wash, which you'll see on the plans, uh, primarily for customers and showroom vehicles. Um, this is kind of the poo-poo platter of uh, car dealership uses. We do note that they don't necessarily plan on um, uh, strictly selling cars outdoors as per the second conditional use permit. Uh, they will have vehicles that are on sale parked outdoors in an existing kind of non-exclusive parking area, uh, but all sales will be done inside. But because some of the vehicles will be parked in this area, we did want to have this on our re uh, refusal letter. Uh, next slide. Uh, everybody's familiar with, I'm sure, where the Best Buy is in South Bay, but you can see it here. Again, specifically the side on the bottom uh, facing uh, the expressway. Next slide. Uh, again, just showing everybody where we are at. This is the existing view, and then we're going to overlay the floor plan and the parking area on this view just to make sure everybody's clear as to where we're talking about. Uh, so next slide. So this is the approximate footprint of the Kia showroom. Again, 12,000 uh, square feet, taking over a portion of the existing Best Buy commercial space uh, that is facing uh, the expressway and Boston Street. Uh, next slide. Again, this is that non-exclusive parking area that I was talking about where there will be uh, added EV charging stations and some um, you know, some uh, non-exclusive parking of their vehicles uh, outside as well. Uh, next slide. And this is just, again, we're going to blow up this uh, uh, floor plan, but just to show you again how it fits in the existing space. Uh, next slide will show the floor plan, I believe, in a little bit more detail. Um, if you could scroll down. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Um, again, prototypical showroom, uh, about 12,000 square feet. There will be uh, back of house, office space, conference rooms. Uh, there will be vehicles parked inside as well for show. Uh, there's that car wash on the right-hand side as well, uh, which is actually an existing space that's there now uh, that Best Buy uses for installation of like electronics and things like that into vehicles. So we would be using that exact same uh, garage bay that's there now. I'm happy to go back to any slides during questions and answers, but it's a, it's a pretty basic layout for uh, uh, showroom and sales only. Uh, the entrance will be, uh, there'll be the primary entrance will be facing the expressway. expressway. You can see uh, top left and then side left, there's also a small entrance that will be facing uh, the kind of general parking lot area for South Bay Mall. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, uh, typical car dealership look, lots of glass and modern feel to it. Um, of course, if this is approved, we will have to go through BPDA design review. Um, we have not uh, gone through that yet, obviously. So, you know, the BPDA did recommend approval uh, with the proviso that plans for any exterior changes uh, are submitted to the agency for design review. But again, modern car dealership look, lots of light, lots of glass. Uh, and again, all of this would be facing uh, the expressway. Um, next slide. I think we have just two more, two or three more. Um, next slide, please, Madam Ambassador. Uh, the test drive route, we did work, um, you know, test drives will happen out of this location. We did work with the neighbors, uh, the neighborhood and the Cormac Civic Association. Uh, we did here to set up the test drive route as a set route in order to avoid the South Bay Mall as much as possible. Uh, while also avoiding some of the residences along Allstate, Baker Court, et cetera, uh, both existing now uh, and also the many that are proposed in the future. Um, so this test drive route uh, will be followed to avoid, as you can see, uh, the you know, South Bay Mall and all the residences um, that are to the south of it um, in that area that I just mentioned. Uh, next slide, I think is the last one. I know, Madam Chair, the Mayor's Office will speak to the outreach process, but we did meet with the uh, McCormick Civic Association who did vote in support of the project. So just wanted to have that in the presentation. Uh, next slide is our is the end. And um, 
happy to answer any questions that you may have, Madam Chair and members of the board, but uh, excited to present this to you today. So thank you. Thank you. So just to confirm, though, though your purpose mentions car wash, that's not a, a part of this proposal, correct? Car wash is a part of the proposal, Madam it's, Chair. Okay. Um, it is, and it was shown in the plans. Okay. However, the, the plan, uh, the idea here is that these will be for showroom vehicles and for customers. Uh, this is not, it's a one bay car wash. It's not, you know, the scrub a dub. It's not a, a, a new commercial car wash. Um, it is primarily planned to be for customers and showroom vehicles only. And people are at the main entrance is on the side facing the highway, you said, not the mall itself? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. There will be a small entrance facing the mall, uh, okay. but the idea is to have this facing the expressway, yes. Okay. Questions from the board? I have one small question. Yes, sir. Um, that's a busy area. I'm just curious, how many parking spots will be available for your customers? Uh, yes, Mr. Langham. So that whole non-exclusive parking area will be available for customers. Um, I don't know how many spaces there is there. I don't know, um, Keith or Nathan or John, if you know off the top of your head. Um, but um, but you're, not rent you're not renting it. It, it, it. Right. So other people can park there who are using the mall. A non yes, ma'am. It's a non-exclusive parking area under the lease. Uh, customers can park there. They can park in the general parking area as well. Um, there will be some of those EV charging stations that we're looking to uh, uh, include, <clears throat> but those will be available not only for uh, showroom vehicles, but also for the general public and those visiting uh, South Bay. So it would be a, a nice little benefit as well. Um, so I, the, the idea is that this non-exclusive area would be available um, for everybody, but that our most of the parking for this location would be encapsulated in that space right across um, from our entrance. Okay, question. Yeah, sure. oh, Mr. Tosula, other than the other than the EP charging stations, are you providing any other community benefit? Uh, no, Mr. Valencia. Other than increasing sidewalks and taking over retail space that's uh, on its last legs and providing additional jobs to the neighborhood and to the city. Um, no, that would be the major benefit. This is not a small project review or any BPDA involvement. Um, it's just a fit out of existing space. So, um, you know, I think modernizing the field, more eyes, more activity in this section of South Bay would be good. Um, but other than that, in the charging stations, no, that was it. Okay, any, any opportunities to include some, uh, planting some trees on the, on the parking? Uh, I don't think there's any plan to add any more trees there. Um, we can certainly have that discussion with the BPDA during design review, but the plan is to take over otherwise that parking area uh, as is, other than the installation of um, you know, additional lighting, um, additional uh, EV stations, and um, you know, some sidewalk work in front of the specific entrance uh, facing that area. Thank you. Are you adding landscaping on the uh, Best Buy side? to extend the landscaping that's been added in front of the other shops there? Uh, I don't That's believe so. Yeah. Nathan, do you want to answer that? I see you on, or Keith, I don't know if one of you has any input on that. Uh, no input at this time. It would, there was no plan of that. Um, uh, as far as I know, we'd have to coordinate with the landlord. I'm not sure what uh, the intent is to keep the existing sidewalks as they exist. Um, that was the plan as of today. Okay. Other questions from the board? Yes, Madam yeah. Chair, I do have a question. Um, yes. I'd just like to understand, you know, when, when folks who are part of this today are not part of it anymore, how is this test drive route going to be kept and memorialized as an obligation to, I guess, perhaps, you know, keep out of the, the neighborhoods? Because uh, I think that that's an important part of understanding, you know, the, the, the nuisance factor that some folks seem like they might have been concerned about. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a good question, Mr. Aiken. Um, you know, again, this is there's no board memo here per se because it's not that threshold of a project. Um, I think you know, the board can, these are conditional use permits, right? So the board can certainly provide that as a proviso if the board see fits. You know, that could be included in in, in the decision. Um, I don't think that the Respect Auto Group has any plans to move anytime soon. Uh, they're looking forward to this, but um, you know, I think that would probably be 
the common and, and typical way for the board to do that. Um, we're happy to agree to put that in our decision as well. But I think if the board so pleases to provide a motion of uh, approval, that could be included in there and we would be amenable to that if that's what the board would like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, can we have public testimony? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ross Cochran with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The proponents have completed their community process at this time. Our office has held an abutters meeting in the middle of September of this year that was well attended with 14 abutters in attendance. Uh, no real explicit support or opposition in that meeting, but there were just some concerns over security in the area in general, not tied to this project. Uh, but the, they did meet with the Civic Association who has a letter of support on file with the ZBA as well as with me. But at this time, we'd like to defer to the sports judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Ross, does the letter of support from McCormick uh, also reference the um, test drive route? I would have to double check on that. If you can give me a minute, I can clarify on that, but I'd have to double check. I know it was actually in their presentation as well that they had a PDF copy of. OK. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Julie Ryan, um, City Councilor Frank Baker's office, we would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve with uh, BPD design review and memorializing the test drive route and you know, as presented today. Anything on landscaping by chance? Happy to, to add to that. <laughs> Sidewalk, <laughs> sidewalk and, landscaping. And to improve sidewalk landscaping. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Mr. Stembridge? Uh, yes. Uh, I apologize, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, can I ask uh, Board Member Aiken, can you, can you clarify what you mean by memorializing the test drive? Well, I think we just want to pick up that the test drive route is clear has been presented to, uh, perhaps to, to not include the South Bay neighborhood um, as the proponent has articulated for in the future. So if there's a better way to, to reference that, uh, we can do so. But I think my concern would be how that lives on um, years from now. Uh, and I, and I understand, I just don't know how enforceable uh, <laughs> it could be as a proviso because Realistically, it's a test drive. It's individuals who take the car. I don't. I just can't see the enforceability of it. I, we, you can keep it on the as the presentation as the test drive. I just wouldn't put it as a proviso right now. Sure, well, that's fine. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like the uh, our attorney was amenable to putting it as a proviso, and I think it is important that we at least acknowledge that uh, what we've said, which is that there are neighbors and really small. Uh, pockets there with small streets, and we should uh, try to res be respectful. So, if uh, Mr. Zazula has a suggestion on how you'd like us to frame the proviso, please feel free. But I, I would encourage it, keeping it. it. If you guys are wanting to keep it, that's fine. I was just bringing up a concern of mine. That's all. Do you have a suggestion on how to rephrase it, or are no. we fine with how? Okay, all right. Yeah, you're fine. Don't worry. All right, great. Was there a second? I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Benabraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Next we have case BOA 1512111. With the address of 15H Mount Vernon Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? There's a raised hand, one second. Hi, Nick, are you ready to give, <laughs> get a, speak on this proposal? Yes, hello, good morning. My name is Nick Ruggieri, I'm the owner and Resident of 15 and a half Mount Vernon Street, apartment number three. And our goal for this project is just to formalize some uh, previously done work in the uh, finished attic space that we use as a, uh, a home office, a home gym, 
Um, but nothing is formally recorded that the work has been done up here. And in order to include it in the uh, area of the property, we needed an FAR variance. Can you confirm no, no new work is being done? This no is new just work is done. Just, uh, the existing condition? Correct. OK. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board? May I have a public testimony? Yes, Ross Cochran from the mayor's office here again. Our office held an abutters meeting in late August of this year with one abutter in attendance. Uh, there was no real support or opposition to this project. Okay. They met with the Civic Association as well, and the Civic Association is in support of this project. Uh, at this time, we'd like to defer to this board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. With that, may I have a motion? Motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Uh, yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Barbaraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 147-511111. With the address of 619 Massachusetts Avenue, is the applicant and or their representative present to explain to the board? Uh, yes, they are. Please proceed. Uh, good morning, board. Um, my name is Chris Prudon. I'm the architect for this project and principal at Zephyr Architects. Um, what I'm presenting to you today is our project at 619 Mass Ave. Uh, it's located between Shamit and Washington Street. My client is the owner of the first unit, which is the garden and parlor level units. Uh, they also have exclusive rights to the rear yard. What we are proposing today is to add a rear deck at the parlor level uh, with a single raised parking space below it. Uh, we'll be demoing the rear Wait, uh, wood. Me? Excuse me? Wait, no, that's Sorry. No, um, we will be. Okay. Can you, can you sorry, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, well, uh, 16 Parkman? Yeah. No, I'm going to double check, but no, I don't. Yeah. Right. Can you please? Right. 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 Thank you. Council right. Baker's office. Okay, yeah, we're good. Thank you, sir. Please proceed. Okay, sorry. Um, my clients are the owners of the garden and parlor levels of this uh, multifamily building. Uh, what they're proposing is to add a rear deck at the parlor level with a raised parking space uh, below it. That parking space will be accessed from Comet Place and we are proposing to construct this new deck and elevated parking area so that we have street access to Comet Place. There is an existing wood dilapidated fence along this rear property line. We are asking to raise that and low and place a, uh, a brick wall with garage door. This brick wall will act as the railing on the rear yard for the, uh, for the deck above and will conceal most, if not all of the tenants use of that space. Um, as you can see from the existing survey, a few pages up, uh, our abutters on both sides actually have extensions that add additional gross square footage to their properties. Sorry, this page right here. Um, you can see the one story brick structure to the left and to the right. Um, the one on the, on the right is a partial use of that space and they do have some outdoor space. We would be proposing to add this garage and deck, which is completely open air uh, and will not be adding any gross square footage to our building. I'm happy to take any questions you have right now, um, if there are any. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Cushelli from Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to, um, to defer to the board on this matter. We held an abutters meeting on September 25th of 2023 where no opposition was shown, and the proposal is in line with other properties in the area. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other raised hands? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the plans be submitted to the South End Landmark Commission for design review. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Bedbraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 152212 with the address of 15 Parkman Street. <laughs> it's the applicant and the applicant put and the board they represent a present to explain. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Chung Lee. I'm counsel for the owner uh, of 15 uh, Parkman Street. Um, I don't see my video, but uh, I uh, can anybody hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, I, I represent the owners of uh, 15 Parkman uh, Street. Uh, I'm counsel for, I'm at 31 Milk Street in Boston, Mass. Yeah, we're here today to, uh, on behalf of uh, the owners, me, Nigo, and Modern Contracting, asking this board to approve uh, a relief for uh, various uh, uh, building, violent, uh, building inconsistencies relative to 15 Parkman Street. 15 Parkman Street in Dorchester is currently an abandoned uh, area. Uh, it's in pretty bad shape at the moment. Uh, what my client is proposing to do is to clean up the location and build a three-story, four-family, four-unit uh, building. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Coordinator, that's the first sheet, um, which is the way it is today. If you go to the next sheet, please. This. Okay, this would be what we propose. No, is that still the first? Is still that the third one? I'm sorry, can you go to the next one, please? Hello, the next slide. Oh, okay, that one, right, right there. This is what we propose it to be. It will be a new unit built with six parking spots uh, in the rear of the uh, property. Um, the front, as you can see in the front on the lower side, that will be Parkman Street with a big, big driveway going to the back as well as access to the unit. Um, as I said earlier, it's a, it's a fourth unit building. Uh, we'll have six parking spots for the residents and guests. It will contain two, two bedroom ba bedrooms and two bath units and two three bedroom and three uh, uh, bathroom units. Uh, that should be shown in the next two or three slides. That's the first one, uh, second one, and the third one. Yeah. And if you go to the next slide, what we're trying to do is to improve the community by enhancing this building, even though it is, yes, right there, please. Uh, while we understand that this is a little in, con uh, in contradiction to what the uh, Section 60, Article 65 says, but uh, you can see that we're trying our best to accommodate for what seems to be a housing issue for the East Coast, uh, particularly in Boston and Massachusetts. But by accommodating, uh, by improving the aesthetics and greenery and so forth. So what we are proposing also is to improve the area by adding greenery, uh, shrubs, trees, surrounding the property and uh, as a result improving the neighborhood livelihood as well as the value for this neighborhood can you go to the next slide please okay that's it so um the key issues with the isc denial um oh let me go for this first we did get in touch with the uh, community we worked with the mayor's office and uh, OS ons to schedule a a, in the butters meeting um and that's it thank you um a, and uh to the best of my knowledge the ons meeting went through with not too many people showing up but there were certainly no objections then we held a uh, a neighborhood meeting with the uh, saint mark's uh, uh neighborhood group uh there were lots of discussion going with uh that we had with the neighborhood group there were certain issues that they uh, they had expressed to us. We've taken that into account. I believe we, the owner actually met with the St. Mark's uh, uh, neighborhood group earlier um, before my, my, my entry into this deal. And there were certain 
uh, items such as forced parking spots instead of six. We've made that change to accommodate for the parking. Um, in the end, uh, the coordinator for St. Mark's did write us a correspondence indicating that their uh, issues had to do with the FAR. Uh, as you can see in the ISC denial notice, um, there's, there is a violation on the FAR. It's uh, 0.8 as opposed to the required 0.4. But uh, we're asking this board to give us relief on that primarily because, again, we tried to address what we might what might be seen as a, a housing issue. We believe building one or two family houses just is not going to address that as well as not making it financially viable for uh, my client as well as any builder for that matter. Um, again, as I indicated earlier, what we're trying to do is to address some of the issues while enhancing the neighborhood. That is exactly the reason why we've done a lot of the design work uh, involving the landscaping, greenery, and, and, and the out exterior of the house. A lot, the exterior of the house had took into consideration some of the comments that the St. Mark's group had given us in the pre during the predecessor meetings. So we hope that this board can grant us relief for those violations that I see so that we can proceed with uh, with this uh, project. Um, uh, uh, that's that's it. Um, if I will be open to answer any questions from the board and the public. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? Yes, I have a question for yes. this. One of the one of your highlights about this project uh, was the that you are improving the greenery and the landscape. And I see that with the addition of six park, six parking spaces in the driveway, you are covering most of the usable open space uh, with asphalt for the parking. So what, what is what you are really improving in terms of greenery and landscape? Uh, I'm sorry, so you're saying what else other than the park of uh, the greenery am I improving? Am, am I correct? Yeah, um, what I'm saying is that you are you mentioned that you are increasing the greenery, so the, the bushes and the trees and everything, but the, what I see is that there are six parking spaces, there is a very big driveway, and I just don't see how you are maximizing the open space to be usable for the new residents who are going to be there. Well, when we, were, when we met with the St. Mary's uh, uh, neighborhood, we did have some proposed uh, greenery that went along the sides of both sides of the building as well as the front. Um, yeah, and uh, the way we're improving it right now, quite frankly, as I mentioned early on, uh, this area is currently in very bad shape. Um, I mean, we're, we're not even talking about greenery, it's such, you know, shrubs and, and garbage over there right now. We're, we're going to be cleaning that whole section up and building something that will be replacing it with something that's acceptable to the neighbor. So, yeah, we're adding, I mean, what I think what you're asking is that on, this, on, the, uh, on the sheets that we have, we don't show the specific spots of where the greenery is going to go, uh, but when we talk to the St. Mark's uh, neighborhood as well as the abutters, we were prepared to show them and take their advice and input as to how they feel that we would, would improve the neighborhood using greenery and so forth. And we're open to that. We're not opposed to that. Thank you, thank you. I was just thinking about the usable open space and thinking that if, if there is a reduction of parking from six to four, you will have more wiggle room to, to reconfigure, reconfigure the parking. But that is just my comment at this moment. Thank you very much. I, I get it, I get it. And, and again, if I may just add one more. Yes, I think I understand what it is. Um, we went from four to six because uh, when we met with the neighborhood groups, that's what they wanted us to do. And we've accommodated for that. Uh, with regards to anything else that had to do with other open spots that we may have, uh, considering the density, uh, we're open to that as well. Uh, so we will be going through design review and whatever is needed to improve the whatever open spots we have, we will certainly address that. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have public testimony? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ross Cochran, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, the proponent has completed their community process at this time. Our office held a butters meeting in May of this year where there were butters in attendance but no real support or opposition. Uh, the proponents did meet with the Neighborhood Civic Association and I do have a letter in my file as well as CBA does, a uh, letter of opposition from that Civic Association. Likewise, I also have two uh, letters of opposition on file with the CBA as well. Uh, at this time, we'd like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, we're going to raise the yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, just to make sure know what other elected official offices are. Are you guys all set? Okay. I'll go with, start with Michael and then Catherine. Can you briefly tell us, if, uh, give us your name and address and let us know if you're in support of opposition? Oh. Okay, go ahead, Michael. You're unmuted. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Michael Folan. Um, where is, I'm here speaking in opposition to this proposal. Kristen Lee, the, the lawyer representing the developer, make, made a presentation to the St. Mark's Civic Association on June the 23rd, 2023, after questions and comments, a vote was taken. A majority was in opposition. All of us present were in opposition. The reason being, this is a 2F6000 subdivision, as stated in the refusal letter, for family forbidden, number of stories and height has been exceeded, insignificant parking for 10 large bedrooms, also no parking on one side of um, Parkman Street. The FAR does not include basement, 10 large bedrooms and 10 bathrooms. It was a concern that some of these bedrooms would be subdivided and living space extended into basement. So the FAR is a major concern. All were in agreement to a development on this site, but on a smaller scale, where we have more open space for trees and green space and landscaping, which we are losing in our neighborhood. And also there was a concern that this would be turned into a room and house. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, Catherine? Hello. Yes, hi. Yeah. Oh. Hi. Um, I live at 21 Parkman Street, and I'm against this project due to the size of the building. And uh, yes, it was. It is a dilapidated building because an elderly man owned it, and then contractors bought it. So it is dilapidated, and I'd like to see something built, but this is way too large. Thank you, oh, Robert. Hi, Robert, are you looking to give testimony here? Okay, it's not unmuting himself. I, I have, okay, they, Robert, go ahead. Okay, um, in talking to my, I am in a butter, I'm at 20 Department Street. Uh, and in talking to my neighbors um, around the street, uh, they're all in agreement that, uh, that the project is too aggressive and for this residential street, number two, um, the project, it's utilizing every available footage on the lot. Uh, the project size should be reduced by about 30%, we think. Uh, overall, the parking, uh, it would, uh, more parking will be forced to the street, and this street is, is there's only parking on one side. Um, there's lack of open space and diminish the quality of the inhabitants and uh, my opinion and the opinion on uh my neighbors on parkland street the current trend of of building and putting building projects on any existing open space in dorchester is discouraging me and my neighbors thank you thank you i have no additional raise hand thank you mr lee would you like to address uh, some of the comments about density Oh, yes, yes. Uh, again, when I during my earlier presentation, uh, there was two points on the increased density um, on the FI. We do understand that we acknowledge that. Um, but um, again, with the anticipated, if not existing already, population growth that we've seen in the Northeast, um, there's no choice but to go up. We can't go horizontal. So building single or double family houses just is not financially viable. Um, that's the reason why my client wished to do this, but improve the neighborhood in other ways, uh, but also accommodating the anticipating uh, housing. In this, the, the second point I'd like to bring out is that my client is not intended, intending to use this property as a boarding house per se. Uh, we're, in fact, we are trying to stay away from the transient uh, uh, prop, uh, uh, population primarily by improving the building to such that in terms of costs and whatnot, uh, it will not be occupied by transient population. Um, we are anticipating when we were in the St. Mary's 
um, neighborhood. We specifically said we were targeting yes. to the middle to upper class uh, 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 okay. residents, not, not you know. Thank so, you, Mr. Yeah, Lee. We're trying to do the best we can. Okay, thank uh, you. Any other questions from the board? Yes, I got one small question. Yes. How many four-story builders are located in that area? Well, this, the intention here is three stories, uh, Mr. Commissioner, not four stories. It's a four unit, but it's a three story house, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I would get to have to answer your question. I don't know of any, but this is a three story house, sir. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Hmm? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Mom, sure. I make a motion to approve with BPDA design review, special attention to increasing usable open space. And the second proviso is that the parking is only for four vehicles. Is there a second? Is there a second? Sorry. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. No. Ms. Berbraza. I'm going to vote no due to community opposition. Mr. Aiken. I'm going to vote no also because four spaces would trigger a new violation at this time. Okay, I don't think the chair's vote matters at this point. Uh, either way, the motion does not carry. Uh, is there a second motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of denial without prejudice. Okay, is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? No. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1506791 with the address of 324 Summit Avenue. Is the applicant and or the representative present to the Uh Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Attorney Nick Zazula again, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. Uh, 28 State Street, Suite 802 in Boston. Uh, Madam Ambassador, I, we did submit a presentation for this one as well, uh, if possible to pull it up. Um, with me today, thank you very much. With me today is David O'Sullivan um, from O'Sullivan Architects and Jeff Fierman from 324 Summit LLC, who is a local developer with a lot of experience and knowledge uh, in the Austin Brighton area. And uh, he recently got rehabbed 16 units across the street at 329 Summit as well uh, and cleaned up that site. So very familiar uh, with the specific area uh, on Summit Ave. Uh, next slide, Madam Ambassador. This is just to orient everybody, uh, Madam Chair, this is a 2,800 square foot property. Uh, it's got an existing three family brick building on it of about 2,800 square feet. You can see here it's located on Summit Ave uh, between Palm Ave and Alston Street. Uh, it's less than a quarter mile walk to the Washington Street MBTA station on the B line and less than a mile walk to the Summit Ave MBTA sta station on the C line. It's also walking distance to the 65 bus on Palm Ave. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just to take you closer to the site. Uh, it is off a private alleyway running behind the site. Uh, which provides access to off-street parking for four dedicated parking spaces uh, to the property. Uh, next slide. This is just an existing uh, view of the building from the street. It's the building that's kind of in the middle between the three that are in the foreground here with the big shrub in front of it. You can see the existing windows to the building which go to the downstairs uh, basement space which is uh, the purpose of the uh, appellant's uh, proposal to add an existing, uh, add a new unit in that space. So just wanted to show you the view as it is today from uh, Summit Ave. Next slide, please. 
Um, this is a left side, again, a straight on view of the building. Right side uh, is better uh, additional images of the building. Uh, this is the rear. So left side's the front and right side's the rear from those parking spaces. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just, again, better images of the rear of the building. You can see the bottom right photo. There's an existing door to the lower level space and the proposed new unit. Again, you can see the third, second, and third parking spaces there, and that is an existing door down to the space now. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are existing images of the downstairs space to be renovated and repurposed. It's an unfinished basement level. You can see uh, some heating uh, and other uh, building equipment, uh, but you can see that there's uh, also on the bottom right is actually Jeff Fearman, who's the developer. You can see there's a lot of uh, head height and ceiling height. It's a seven and a half foot ceiling, uh, but again, vastly underutilized space in a building that um, uh, could uh, provide an additional unit, which is why we're proposing it. You can also see some uh, of the existing windows on the top left of this frame. Uh, on one side, those are the ones facing the front, and then you can see another window on the bottom left as well that is existing today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are a little tough to see, but these are the existing floor plans. You can see uh, Madam Ambassador top left, it would be perfect to zoom in like you just did. That's the existing lower level plan. Uh, you can see that uh, unfinished lower level space with stairwell uh, down to it. Uh, and um, then you can see the other uh, floors in the building. Uh, it is a three story building. Uh, each floor has its own unit. The first floor is a two bed. Second floor is a three bed and the third floor is a three bed. Uh, and what's being proposed on the next side you'll see is a studio unit for this unfinished lower level space. So if you could scroll down, Madam Chair, that would, uh, Madam Ambassador, that would be great. Uh, to the next slide, please. Uh, Madam Ambassador, could you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so again, um, if you could, the left side of the screen is again that existing floor plan. The uh, the uh, middle portion of the slide is just a section which shows the ceiling heights and kind of the elevation that I just mentioned. Uh, it is a, a, a basement space, but it is kind of half above ground, half below ground. And then you can see on the right hand side the new uh, proposed floor plan to, to add this unit by renovating the existing space in the unfinished basement. Uh, in order to recapture this underutilized floor space. Uh, on the right side is that proposed studio kind of plus, studio plus unit, it is 540 square feet. It has an alcove, uh, it has adequate ceiling height and proper egress. And, uh, you know, again, with the grade change from the, there's a grade change from the front of the property to the rear of the property, makes it a little bit more of kind of a half basement level than a full basement level. Um, next slide, please. And this is uh, a rendering. Uh, I think this is very helpful to show you what it would look like, a, a big transformation, obviously. Um, first of all, um, the front yard, you can see on the left side of the screen will be uh, dug out to add full windows and more light and air into the unit. Um, the basement ceiling height, again, is seven and a half feet. Um, there will no, be no changes otherwise to the existing building envelope or proposed work to the other floors, uh, but we will be installing new sprinkler and fire alarm systems throughout the entire building. This building was built in 1910, so by adding this unit, we will uh, also upgrade the entire life safety for the building, which I think is a, a huge benefit to the residents in the neighborhood. And you can kind of see uh, uh, on the right-hand side just some uh, renderings of what the interior would look because I think you know, we want to show that there would be a lot of light and air and it's not going to be a dark, you know, kind of dingy uh, basement level unit. Um, um, so we worked hard to kind of be able to provide that to the board as well. Uh, a few more slides. Uh, next slide, I believe, is just our zoning relief needed. Uh, we do need, because we are adding an exist, uh, a new unit, uh, we do need zoning relief for lot area insufficient. Uh, for the additional unit, usable open space insufficient because we are adding a new unit, off-street parking insufficient because we are adding a new unit, although again, there are four parking spaces at the rear and a lot of uh, transit right around us. Uh, we are cited for floor area ratio. You can see in the middle chart, we have uh, an existing FAR just below one. The, the allowable FAR is one, and we are now with the recapturing of that existing space would be up to 1.2. 
And then we also need relief because we're, we're hoping to use that existing and proposing to use that existing rear entry, which is there now. Um, otherwise, it, this project is impossible because a, a new entrance from the front would just take up way too much floor space to get down to the basement. Um, so we're looking to uh, utilize that existing entrance at the rear to get to this uh, unit. Um, next slide is the last slide, Madam Ambassador, is just the refusal letter, Madam Chair, which just shows you exactly what I just said, but wanted to show you it in a chart format. And then the final slide, I believe, is just our thank you slide. Um, so tried to get through that as quick as I could, but wanted to give a lot of context to the board. I know that there's always a lot of discussion about basement units, uh, but we do think that this provides uh, the possibility um, to uh, you know, add an extra unit into the housing stock. And I will just finally say, Madam Chair, that we did receive a BPDA recommendation of approval uh, with proviso to look at some of these details that I had uh, presented on. So happy to answer any questions you may have and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. We do have those recommendations in hand. <laughs> any questions from the board? Okay, Aaron Nunn, may I have public Madam testimony? Chair, Madam yes, Chair, sorry. If I may, um, uh, my question is how many actual means of egress are there? Uh, yes, Mr. Stembridge, there will be two. Um, David O'Sullivan, I don't know if you want to just uh, maybe yes. elaborate on that a little bit, but we will have the, the correct amount of uh, egress. David, you want to answer that a little yes, bit more? There's basically. Um, Two means of egress. One will be directly to the unit from the back, um, as Nick had mentioned. The um, there is a side entrance to the building that serves as the second means of egress for the um, upper floors, and there's a stair connecting it down to the basement. So we will utilize that um, side entrance. Um, it's kind of on the left side. You see it on the first floor plan there. Um, as our second means of egress from the basement space. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judge from this board. This is some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS held in the Butters meeting on September 21st. Uh, no Butters were in attendance. Uh, we went on to receive a letter of support and a letter of opposition, both from uh, members of the broader Alston Brighton community. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Oh, that makes sense. And Madam, okay, look, just one hand just popped. Oh, go ahead, Annabella. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabella Gomes from the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. Uh, we typically do not uh, support basement units, but this unit is mostly above ground and it will supply an additional dwelling unit, so we voted to support it. Thank you. Thank you. And one more hand, second. Um, Dolly, are you looking to give testimony here? Well, if I'd like to, Dolly Bogdanian, I live in um, Park Drive in, in Boston, and I really just wanted to suggest that the board ask um, how access to the extensive plumbing and piping that serve the building will be retained. Thank you. Madam yeah. Chair. Yes. Do you want us to answer that? I'm happy to, to do it if you, I don't want to do that, but. Are there any other raised hands, Jessica? No, ma'am. But thank you. If you feel compelled to, Mr. Zazula, feel free. Well, out of deference to Dolly and knowing her for many years, yes. Um, um, David, do you want to answer that briefly as to the plumbing? I think we're just going to modernize everything. This is an old building and things can be a lot smaller and reduced than they used to be, right, David? But do you yes. want to answer that um, a little bit more? We're, we're looking at uh, basically um, reworking. We did provide a utility room in the back where most of that plumbing comes down. And so we will be not really having to reroute much of any of the plumbing. They'll come down and come into the basement um, through the utility room, and the existing utilities will be kind of condensed um, into that space. So we do have that fairly large utility room in the back, kind of quarter of the basement. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? But Madam Chair, I'd like to put for a motion of approval uh, with a proviso that there be no building co relief. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Uh, yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. 
Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to the last case for 9.30, uh, it is 11 a.m. Um, so we'll ask if there are any requests for deferral or withdrawals from the 11 o'clock conference. 4459 Washington Street. So that would be case BOA 1530302 with the address of 4459 Washington Street. Uh, would you explain, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the Board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 <laughs> Beacon Street. We did just get the BPDA um, recommendations today asking us to concentrate and make changes on the parking scheme. Uh, we should be able to do that quickly. We already have a plan in place, uh, so we would seek uh, a deferral to make some changes. What time frame are you looking for, Mr. Drago? We're already in, we've already got a schematic, so as quickly as you can get us on, Madam Chair. Javier? Uh, we can do December 5th, if that will work. Or, Perfect. Okay. May I have a motion? Motion to refer to December 5th. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Stembridge? Yeah. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. See you then. Thank, thank you very much. 88 Chestnut Street? Okay, that would be case BOA 1510490 with the address of 88 Chestnut Street. Would you explain, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with Adams and Maranti, business address of 168 H Street, first floor, South Boston. Uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, I was retained yesterday um, by the owners of 88 Chestnut Street. Uh, upon review of the refusal letter, I see that there were some inconsistencies with what was provided. Uh, we are in a GCOD overlay district, uh, and unfortunately, we were not cited for such. So we would uh, like to request a short deferral to allow for the plans examiner to review the plans and issue an updated refusal uh, for the GCOD. And as well as we have already provided the approved Boston Water and Sewer plans uh, to Christian Simonelli. And again, so we just uh, need some time to clear up those inconsistencies with the, the refusal letter. Thank you. Uh, Javier, what's available? You yeah, I think it has to be re-advertised, so I'm suggesting January 9, 2024. Mr. Spitz? Which is the first hearing of the new year. Yes, if that's the, the soonest date possible, we'll have to take it. Okay, uh, may I have a motion? Motion to defer until January 9, 2024. May I have a second? Second. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. See you then. Great. Thank you. Hearing no further requests for withdrawals or deferrals from this time frame, then we'll return to the last case uh, for 9.30 which is case BOA 150476 with the address of 85 to 93 Boyneville Avenue. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Gosda on behalf of the appellant with the business address of 245 Sumner Street, Suite 110, Boston, Mass. Um, with me this morning as well as Dennis Dobbins, who's the manager of record. This is an appeal to change the use and occupancy for the new restaurant Fields West at 85 to 93 Glenville Avenue to include quote unquote use item 38 to allow live entertainment at the property. 
Um, currently, the CFO for the restaurant just denotes restaurant use, and the addition of use of item 38 would allow the restaurant to apply to MoCal to obtain an annual live entertainment license to liven up the space and bring live entertainment back to the neighborhood. Um, in terms of entertainment that would be offered in the space, they're envisioning stand-up comedy nights, poetry readings, as well as live music performances by local artists as well. Um, it is worth mentioning that when the new owner of the restaurant renovated the space, they did fully soundproof the space with acoustic panels in the ceiling, as well as foam insulation along the joists and walls. So in terms of sound emanation, we don't believe that there will be much, if anything, going on outside of the exterior of the premise, um, in addition to within the space as well. Um, given most of the entertainment will be taking place within a back room at the restaurant, that's self-contained with no windows and has brick mason, uh, masonry brick walls. Um, so that way, those who prefer a quieter meal can certainly still feel free to dine in the main dining room at the restaurant while there is a function or any type of entertainment going on in the back room. Um, obtaining this license, as I mentioned, basically would obviate the need for the restaurant to obtain one day licenses from the city and any time that they plan to have a special function or have a performer come into the restaurant. Um, that being said, the main goal is really just to liven up the space and make it a neighborhood spot um, and will fully remain a full service restaurant. Um, and there are no physical changes to the space proposed other than just the change of use and then the therefore enabling them to obtain the live entertainment license. Um, in terms of community outreach before we came before you all today, we have discussed this matter with both ONS and the Austin Civic Association, who is very much excited for the proposal. And um, we have obtained many letters of support from members of the neighborhood as well. Um, but we're certainly happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Thank you. Questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process, as you heard from the applicant's representation, ONS had the applicant flyer uh, abutters within 300 feet. Uh, we received one letter of support directly to our office um, from a member of the broader Alston community, as well as a letter of opposition um, from a direct abutter on Glenville Ave uh, expressing concerns regarding noise. Uh, the applicant went on to meet with the Alston Civic Association, which I understand uh, voted to support this proposal. I was excited to have more opportunities uh, for local artists in the uh, Alston area. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, two raised hands here. Um, Connie, you're going to give testimony. Then we'll go to Dennis. Yes, thank you. Um, I am opposed to this. I think the area is uh, totally residential. Um, it is not, you know, Com Ave. It's not Brighton Ave. It's a very residential area. I'm concerned about the extreme increase in traffic as well as the noise, not only from the live entertainment but also for you know, increased, making it more like a bar where you have more increased foot traffic, you know, drunks, whatever. If this is a residential area. I'd like to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I have no additional raised hands. And we should note, uh, we, we did receive a number of emails directly, uh, generally in support of the project. Uh, any additional questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Motion to approve and no within code allowed. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yeah. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? No. Ms. Bedbraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. So we will now move on to the hearing schedule for 11 a.m. The first one will be case BOA 1530332 with the address of 289 to 289A D Street. It's the applicant and the order of representative present to explain. Can you hear yes. 
to, uh, to sorry, I just okay. if the ambassador could advance to 289 uh, D Street. <coughs> You want to start, Mr. Drago? Sure. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscana with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the applicant, Keith Harrington, and the owner of 289, 289A D Street in South Boston. I also have Arthur Chu, who's the architect on the proposal. Um, the proposal is to change the occupancy. I'm sorry, let's just, let's just pause. She's still on okay. uh, 88 Chestnut Street, and we just want to get you to the right sure. slides. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you. Can, can you change the, the slides? You're on 88 Chestnut. We're on the next case. Thank you. There we go. Great. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the proposal, as a state, is to change the occupancy, and in this rendering, um, the blue house is the new proposed building, which I believe blends in nicely with the rest of the block. And it's to change from an existing two-family building to a three-unit building, uh, and it's by adding a vertical addition and then a roof deck uh, on the top floor accessed by hatch uh, only. Uh, you can go to the next slide, Madam Ambassador. <laughs> This is the existing condition of the house. And as you can see, it's an existing two, but there is bedroom space uh, up on that uh, top floor. So it's two and a half story, uh, where the yellow line is we would infill um, and blend in with the other buildings on the block. Uh, this particular subdistrict is zoned MFR. Um, so it is a multifamily residential district. Uh, the unit breakdown, if you go to the next slide, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Madam Ambassador, you can just see uh, the mix of housing stock and composition and size of the building in that general area. You can see the buildings around us do have um, private roof decks as well. Um, and so the building, when we infill it, would match the height of the buildings on either side of us. Uh, next slide, please. And then this just shows uh, the proposed rendering from two different angles. Uh, and you can see some of the other roof decks in the area as well. Next slide. Uh, the unit breakdown would be uh, unit one is a 991 square foot, three bedroom, one bath. Unit two, which is existing 518 square foot, one bedroom, one bath. And then unit three, uh, the new unit, uh, 711 square foot, one bedroom and one bath. Um, unit one is connected to the lower level, the basement that's already existing as well. Um, and that would remain the same. And then unit three would have that private access to the roof deck and the roof deck proposes 191 square foot roof deck. And you can see the back, there would be egress stairs of the rear as well. You can go to the next slide, please. Now we get into the, the plot plans and the, and the plans here. Um, just to go over uh, the variances needed. So FAR existing is 2.48 and we're going up slightly to 2.74. Um, usable open space, we're at 172. Um, side yard and uh, rear yard and parking are all pre-existing violations. Um, so we're not changing. Uh, the depth of the building are going back any further as well. Uh, we did have an extensive community process, uh, did get the support of the uh, St. Vincent's Association, and uh, I believe the support from the BPDA and their recommendation as well. And I can pause and answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office will defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS held an abutters meeting on August 7th, 2023. Uh, one abutter was in attendance. Uh, from understand, no real issues were initially expressed. Uh, the applicant went on to meet with the SVLENA. Um, I guess St. Vincent's originally opposed, but it sounds like things were worked out. Um, and the Civic Association is now in support, um, is our understanding. Um, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Good morning, none of the chair members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in opposition. 
um, as he has respectfully requested the proponent remove the roof deck to, to the significant quality of life issues that have stemmed from activity on roof decks for many years in South Boston, with South Boston becoming a destination for many young people on the weekends for several years. Um, Taxpaying residents that have to deal with loud parties at all hours and trash removal issues that have negatively impacted our seniors, persons with disabilities, and young family. We ask that the board take this issue seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Madam Chair. Oh, go ahead. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, uh, Michael Flaherty. Although the council would acknowledge the communal effort that went into drafting Article 68, we does feel that there are projects that do warrant, uh, that do have merit. Um, this being one of them, the, uh, the roof deck at issue here um, is for the penthouse um, top floor only. It's not a communal roof deck. Um, that being said, uh, it's, a, it's a reasonable project. The, uh, the neighborhood group is in, uh, is in support now, as, as far as we know. And that being said, the, uh, the council is going to recommend supports. Thank you. Okay, and Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Thanks. With that, may I make a, may I have a motion? Motion to approve the PPPA review. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. However, we're missing the request that it include Department of Parks and Recreation. Yeah, I, I David, I, I wasn't sure about that, but. I'm not either. I, I believe there's a, sorry to interrupt. There, there's a small park nearby, so it, it came on. I It wasn't triggered in any of the <clears throat> ISD notification or variances. Yeah, so that's, uh, I didn't see the need to include the park and recreation for that reason. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, then without that piece. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the chair also votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have state DOA 1505462 with the address of 368 Dorchester Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain? Jessica, do you know if they're on? Yeah, there's a raised hand here. One second. Thank um, you. We'll listen to um, Brian and Alicia. Are you guys on for this proposal? Uh, hello? Hi, yeah. Are you on for this proposal? Uh, I am. My, my wife is Alicia Rubio Spring. She should also be on. Okay. okay. She's Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yes, yes ma'am. Oh, great. Um, I don't know why I, I can't be seen by video, but I am also here by video if that's possible. Yeah. I'll make you a panelist. It's going to mute you for a second. So Thank you. A panelist, uh, just unmute yourself, and then we can get going. Thank you very much. Can, can you hear me now and see me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the board. I'm Alicia Rubio Spring. Um, you heard my husband, Brian Spring, is also on the line. Um, we own the condo at 368 Dorchester Street, Unit 6. We bought it in 2020 during the pandemic um, with an existing roof deck. And you can see from the deed that's actually up right now, the survey deed, uh, it's dated 2006. The roof deck is on the deed. Um, that's what we saw when we purchased the condo. Um, a couple years later, some of the boards on the roof deck needed to be repaired, and we submitted, a, you know, started the permitting process to do that and realized that the roof deck is not actually on file um, with the plans with ISD, and so here we are. Um, we're not trying to change anything about the roof deck whatsoever. We just want to make these repairs to make the roof de deck safe. We have a two-year-old and one on the way due in February. And so we just, we really don't want to change anything here. We just want to kind of make these repairs and move on. Um, we went through the, the community process. We had uh, unanimous support of the Andrew Square Civic Association at their meeting in September. 
And when we held our neighborhood uh, meeting in, uh, I believe it was the end of June uh, or August, um, there was one abutter who attended who was in support of the plan. Um, again, like, we're just not trying to change anything about the roof deck from when we bought it and when it was built in 2006. Um, we just want to kind of get it properly permitted and repaired once the, the approval process goes through. So I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some background information in the community process. As you heard from the applicant, uh, Ona has held an abutters meeting on August 21st. Uh, there was one abutter who was in attendance who expressed uh, support for the proposal. They then went on to meet with the Andrew Square Civic Association, which wrote a letter in support that the board should have on the file. Um, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Yep. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The council would like to go on record in opposition as ISD Commissioner Lighton informed our office via email yesterday that this building was approved back in, 20, in 2005 without a roof deck included in their plans. Council President Flynn believed that we should not be approving any permits or plans that were not legally built as this sets up a dangerous precedent in the city for other projects to do so without proper approvals. This may not be the current owner's or proponent's fault. However, if approved, Council President Flynn is extremely concerned this type of behavior can become common practice in the city with people building roof decks on their own and the city endorsing these years after the fact. Council President Flynn believes everyone needs to abide by the same set of rules, so those that follow the rules will also know that they did not do so for no reason. In the final analysis, there is a legitimate public safety concern that if we approve decks built on their own years ago, on approved roof decks may go up over the city. On approved Roof decks without proper inspection could lead to serious harm or even tragic events and death. Council President Flynn asked that the board take these three issues of following the rules, setting dangerous precedent and public safety seriously. We please ask to take this into consideration and deny this proposal. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Echoing the concerns articulated by Council President Flynn's office uh, and due to the violations of Article 68, the Council could directly in opposition. Thank you. Okay, good. I'm sure I have no raised hands. Thanks. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you want to respond to that uh, before we proceed, Ms. Rubio Spring. I mean, I would just say, <clears throat> as I think Ms. Calderon and Mr. Flaherty indicated, um, you know, this, this isn't a situation where we constructed this roof deck. It's been there for 13 years. We're just trying to make it safe for our family. We want to keep our family um, in this neighborhood. And like I said, we're, we are a growing family. And so I, I would respectfully disagree that our project here before you is not a public safety concern um, and something that, that we just want to make it right and do the right permitting here. Thank you. And, and are there other roof decks on your building, or is yours the only one? So we're we're the roof deck at the top. The other roof decks that are um, kind of tiered to the units below the second and third floor, or the the second and first floor, those are on the plans with ISD already. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we will. Um, the next case has been deferred, so we will move on to case BOA 1409103 with the address of 9 Keswick Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain to the board?
Hello? Yes, Mr. Austin? Yes, hi, I'm, I'm here with my architect, and um, he was having difficulty uh, with his computer, so we're now on my iPhone, and he will make a presentation. His name is Lucho Trabuco. Hi, Madam Chairman, mem members of the board. Uh, my name is again Lucho Trabuco, Trabuco Architects. Um, we are proposing, uh, let me start with the 9 Caswick Street. The existing condition is uh, 4,100 square feet of living space, four bedroom, three and a half baths, townhouse on a 2,178 square foot lot. The zoning is Audubon Circle neighborhood. The sub-district is multifamily residential. Um, again, the existing is a single family residence on three, on three floors, uh, plus the walkout uh, lower, lower unit. Uh, what we're proposing is uh, to have four two bedroom, two bath units, one per floor. Um, and on, again, one okay, one per, per floor. We had several meetings uh, through the year with uh, the uh, butters. We answered some numerous and you know, we solved the numerous issues and, and agreed on some issues. There was one issue still pending, which was basically the the entrance, the main entrance to the lower level unit on Keswick Street. Again, the lower level is a walkout from the rear alleyway. Uh, we feel that because of safety uh, reasons, uh, that we need two means of egress for that unit, and having the front, you know, an entrance on the Keswick Street will, will uh, be a safety concern to us if we eliminate that. So I think we need that. Uh, we feel that we need uh, that that entrance. Uh, the, in, the visual impact on the street by adding that entrance is minimum because that this, there will still be a railing. Uh, gate similar to the adjacent property, so it's uh, basically visually it will not have any impact on uh, Castle Street. Uh, the the proposed addition concern, if you can see, uh, if you see the elevation, we see on the plans, please, uh, is basically have a five feet addition to the alleyway on the rear of the property, as well as a deck which will serve as a second means of egress. Uh, we, again, one of the agreement with the abutters is not to have the addition, the five foot addition, plus the deck uh, further out than the existing decks on that alleyway. So basically, we're conforming to the depth of the decks existing on the alleyways. Um, so that, and again, there will be the be three parking space below the unit. Uh, uh, you know, uh, below below that uh, deck uh, as, as as well. Again, you know that 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 uh, can you speak? Uh, the five foot the five foot extension in the, in the rear of the property, which basically consists of a storefront system, so it'd be a glass uh, all along that uh, rear elevation. Um, so that's basically. I mean, I can go to the zone refusal there if you like, uh, just to go over the the whole. Uh, uh, you know, just the the, the violations. Uh, the, the groundwater conservation uh, overlay district, we did receive a letter of approval. Uh, the roof structures restriction, uh, again, the roof structure that we are proposing with the deck would be the same size as the existing deck, the adjacent property of 7 Caswick Street. So it would be the same size, the same size roof deck. One of the agreements with the neighbors has to, to locate the contents of units to the rear of the property, which we agree to that. Um, the off dock parking uh, loading area, we are in violation there. We can only have three parking spaces which be located in the, you know, underneath that deck. The, the, the basement unit is forbidden. We showed, I did a section that showed that 50% of, the, of, of that unit is above grade. So I think we conform to that. And the dimensional regulation, most of them are existing. I mean, the only thing we're adding is the five foot in the back. Uh, as well as that head house, uh, which will be a little bit higher than what's the 45 feet, which is allowed in that area. So if you have any questions. Thank you. Um, can you just confirm uh, height? Are you, are you making any changes to height? The height of the building remains the same. The only thing we're height. adding is a rooftop structure, which will be located in the rear, to, so there will be no impact on the front, on the Keswick Street. Uh, elevations. So that's not visible for me. If you walk on the sidewalk, even across the street, you won't be able to see that that, that head house. So that's the only thing that we are changing in the height. 
Okay. Uh, questions and from that, the board? I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt, but their height misses above, you know, the, the lower height is 45. That, that's about 40, 46 feet uh, from the average of the site. Thank you. Questions from the board? Yes, I, I do have a question. Um, we received feedback from the Auburn Circle Neighborhood Association to review your front entrance. Um, they requested that there'll be no front entry. And I'm looking at, I can't find your basement plan. Can you go to your basement plan that would the, show that proposed front entry? Okay, yes. I, I see. I, I think I'm looking at the presentation. Okay. Yes, can if you, you can see it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I see it. Yep, yeah. I see it. Can you talk us through um, that front entry? So you have one that's existing, which is leads to the main foyer, and then you're proposing a new one to go to the basement unit, correct? Yes, there's an existing entrance that goes to the upper units, the first, the first floor as well as the upper units. We're proposing, there's a little yard in the front, which is typical in the whole street. Uh, what we are proposing is to keep the same shape of the, the, the yard as there is there now, the fence still be there, the same details, except you know, locating a gate and also a stairway to go down to the basement unit or to the lower level unit. Uh, we feel that that will give the unit two means of egress. Uh, it makes it just, to, to us, it's just basic safety, safety issues. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Uh, yes, quickly, uh, I'm sure. Are there other basement units like this on Keswick Street that exist without this this stairwell? I'm just trying to understand if there's other, uh, the, other units with similar conditions. Yeah, I can respond, and then Brian, the owner, can respond as well. There are uh, most most of the units in the street uh, have multifamily, and they also have you know lower level units. Uh, the other, there's some units that have taken. Uh, you know, and solve the problem of the of the, uh, the means of egress by putting in a well. Uh, so basically, that's the same, almost the same detail that we had, except instead of that, they just lowered it to put a you know a large egress window. Uh, so that's how um, some have addressed that issue, safety issues. But we feel that this would be a better solution than just have a you know like a, a window well. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah, if you want to, also, Brian, if you can you know, say something as well. Yes, I'd like to. Uh, Brian Austin, owner. Uh, in, in doing my research on this property, um, Section 61-8 of the Building Code, Chapter 10, it says the main entrance shall face the front lot line. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we, we are in total compliance. Um, uh, this is a, a, a neighborhood of many apartments, condominiums. I think there is one single, uh, single family left on the street. And um, we feel like this feature uh, will actually um, help the neighborhood as well as uh, uh, make this unit be more included within the neighborhood. Um, having an entrance through a window well is not um, is, is it would be very difficult and only available in emergency situations. Uh, can you confirm uh, whether you've spoken with uh, Boston Water and Sewer around GCOD? Yes, we did. We also received uh, a letter from them as well. Cool. Okay, so you have no harm letter from them already? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, um, may I have public testimony? Yes. Madam Chair, um, members of the board, members Christian Soto. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Christian. Just, yeah. That's okay, Maggie. Okay, sorry about that, Maggie. Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both key card letters from the applicant. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Maggie Vanspo with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer the judgment of the board. Background on the community process, we ran an abutters meeting on December 2nd of 2022. Concerns were raised primarily about the additional front entrance proposed. I will detail those concerns in a moment. After that abutters meeting, the applicant met with the Audubon Circle Neighborhood Association, which is in non-opposition to this proposal, quote, except to the extent the ZBA allows the applicant to modify the front exterior facility 
facade of the building to insert an additional below grade entrance. The Civic Association and the abutters in opposition feel that the new entrance is unnecessary and would disrupt the visual, the visual symmetry of the row house facades on the street. Um, to that end, I have received three letters in support and three in opposition. And again, our office would like to defer to the judgment board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have some raised hands here. Um, I'm not sure if Dolly, I know, is, are you looking to get testimony in this proposal as well, Dolly? Hi, yes, my name is Dolly, full name Dolores Bogdanian, 452 Park Drive. I am currently president of the Audubon Circle Neighborhood Association. I live at 452 Park Drive, which makes me, I think, in a better. And um, I, I don't like to come before this board um, to oppose uh, residential projects. And I, in, in general, I think you heard that the uh, neighbors understand the need for housing and dividing this now what once was what what was once was sorry a single family home into four units is is not raising any alarm bells for us what is is changing the front of the building and i i can't help but disagree with what's been said uh, there are no other entrances like this on the street um, this would be a new addition to the facade of the, of the buildings. Um, it's going to be one yard wide, which I don't understand how it can be an attractive entryway for the new owner of the basement unit. I would also point out that the uh, there is safe egress and access from the rear of the building. Um, this applicant got approval for a basement unit in the immediately abutting property, 7 Keswick Street, that is in a building that is essentially the same as this one. Um, and the ISD approved uh, the secondary means of egress being from a front window. So if that can be done in, in that case, I believe it can be done in this case without presumably interfering with the safety of the, of the resident. This is a little yard, that term was used. It's five feet wide. And the entryway again will be one yard. Put putting one yard in front of you, and, and let us understand how all the disruption that will be caused to the building, to the neighbors as this is being constructed, and to the ultimate and what the ultimate result will be um, would be um, would be beneficial. So I'm, I don't want to take up too much of the time. I just want to say that we are opposed to the new front entrance. It's not necessary, and it is not in keeping with the neighborhood or with this Keswick Street and it, these lovely Thank row you. houses. That Thank you. Um, Ever? Oh, Eve Rice? Eve Rice. Go ahead. You're unmuted. We can't hear you. Um, Kathleen, are you looking to give testimony here as well? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, my name is Kathleen Schultz. I um, live directly across the street from this project at 10 Keswick Street, and I've been part of the neighborhood for a very long time. Um, I am uh, basically not opposed to this project at all. Um, my opposition is specifically to the new front entrance. As has been said before, um, this is, uh, it will destroy the symmetry of the street. Um, the, the area is a uh, historic overlay area, very charming. It's one of the reasons that Mr. Austin has decided to develop two places. It's a beautiful little neighborhood and we'd like it to stay that way. Um, many of the, um, the condominiums that have been developed have used the front door as the main entrance to a basement apartment. Um, and that is another suggestion aside from, um, you know, uh, the ones that have been put up for keeping the symmetry. Um, the uh, Mr. Austin and his group have responded very nicely to a lot of our concerns. This one, I think, goes to the heart of keeping this lovely residential street and area, keeping the, um, uh, the initial charm that brought us all to it. Thank you. Thank you. And it uh, looks like I have no additional raised hands. 
Thank you. Yes. Madam Chairman, can I answer the, the question about the foreign entry, please? Please, briefly. Yeah, uh, there's no in visual impact. I mean, the entrance basically it's on the same same level as the yard that is now. Uh, the busy the, the stair is within the foundation wall, so there's no visual impact. I mean, you still have the the railing, uh, the fence, the same same design fence that there now surrounding that yard, like the adjacent property. So basically, the only one uh, that time you see it if you're right really ab above that entryway. Actually, design new kind of stuff. So, How does this affect the green space that's there now? So, would you be removing it since you're putting an entrance there? That would be that would be the only the only change would be the, the little you know uh, space that is there. That would be you know not, not all of it, but most of it taken taken out by that that stair going down. Yes. Thank you. But Any other visually, there's no the there's no visual impact on that. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Hearing none, may I have a motion? M Madam Chair, I like to put forward a motion of with a proviso that BPDA that um, BP, with BPDA design review paying special attention of uh, rethinking the front entry um, to the basement unit and to see if it's possible to uh, stack um, uh, the, the entry um, with the vertical access to the second and third floor. So more of a internal uh, stairway leading to the basement unit versus a, a front entry, front entrance. I think you just froze for a second. Could you just repeat that last part? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I see that it, it it is in the neighborhood design overlay district. Um, I'm just putting forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the project undergoes BPDA design review. And in that process, trying to have a internal entrance to the basement um, versus an external one. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Bedabraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will jump ahead quickly to the rediscussion scheduled for 11:30 a.m. to ask if there are any requests for withdrawals or deferral. From that time frame. I would just also uh, put a reminder that we are a six person board today. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yes, there is one. Michael Welsh just rose his hand. Yeah. I guess that's uh, uh, Michael Welsh um, here for uh, the 421 East 6th Street hearing. Um, we, uh, at the request of Councilors Flynn and Flaherty have agreed to uh, defer uh, to continue a discussion about the site drainage with some of the neighbors and um, have an abutters meeting and then um, get the next available uh, hearing date. Bob uh, Neer. Well, before that, uh, Norm, can you read that case into the record? Uh, that oh. one is case BOA 143 with the address of 421 East 6th Street. Uh, Mr. Welsh, what, when's the abutters meeting? Uh, we haven't scheduled one yet. Um, and just you know, for, for the record, there, so there are some um, issues involving drainage that involve this, the whole block and, you know, developing this site can be a partial solution to some of that. And, you know, while that's not, this is, drainage is not something that is, um, related to the zoning relief that we're seeking um we're you know we're happy to continue the discussion you know, about that so we make everybody a little bit more comfortable so that what's the time frame you're looking for mr walsh that I just think that uh, you know very, very quickly um so we'll like have um get a flyer for the next abutters meeting that we can probably try to have it within the next i'd say two or three weeks depending on schedules and i'll, I'll try to reach out to people to make sure it's not right around um, um the holidays or anything but Within the next two months, we'd like to be back to the to the board. If possible. So I would suggest January or later. To be, uh, ma'am, Chair, I'd say January 9, twenty twenty four. Does that work, Mr. Welsh? 
Yeah, that would work for me. Yep. Okay. May I have a motion? Sure. I make a motion to defer till January twenty twenty four. Okay. Can I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Barbaza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Any other requests for deferral of conference on the 11:30? Conference. Uh, no. Ralph Mulandre stand. Uh, I just ask you to mute. Uh, don't know who that is. Okay. Are you here for uh, twenty six months? Montrose. Montrose. Well, I just asked him to mute. He, yeah, that's too. It so it looks like oh, let me try to unmute the other person. Hi. Hi. Can you get off the second device? device? The echo because of the echo. Okay. I did. Okay. Are you looking for a deferral? Yes, uh, I am from, uh, my name is uh, Patrick Carlo Defar for 26 okay. Montrose Street. Okay. Can you read that into the record, Mr. Stembridge? Yes, Madam Chair. That is for case BOA 1514976 with the address of 26 Montrose Street. Um, would you, would you, will you explain to the board? Yes, the, uh, the reason for the deferral, yes, the reason for the deferral is that I, uh, I, plan, I submitted the plan uh, recently, so they have, they need the time to advertise and to, to notify the neighbors, so they, uh, I want it to Go to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am, Chair. I think the ZBA staff already advertised this, so I uh, recommend defer to December 12th. Okay. Does that work for you, Mr. Defar? Yes. Okay. May I have a motion? Motion to defer until December, this case, until December 12th. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Bedebraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. See you then. Thank you. Then going back to the final case from the final uh, from 930, um, well, uh, that would be case BOA 151. 5265 with the address of 207 to 209 Market Street. Is the applicant and or their representative here to explain to the board? Uh, yes, I am. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Kurt Bletzer, 300 Market Street, Brighton, Mass. For Whiskey Wine, Brighton, LLC, who is the uh, uh, tenant in the property at 207 Market Street. We're here today um, to request change of use. Uh, we've gone in with a retail package store to take over the space that was what was in there prior to us, which was a pet supply store. It's been closed for a couple of years. Uh, we've been through the neighborhood process. We've been through the Boston Licensing Board and the ABCC for approval of the liquor license. We need to change. We need a request from the board to change the use to include a retail package store on the first floor. It is it abuts, it's right next door to the CVS on Market Street between the CVS and the uh, car wash that's presently there. Mike Ridd, who's the manager uh, of the LLC, is also on with us. Thank you. Questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office will defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. ONI Settlement Butters meeting on September 28th, wherein attendees express support, uh, including um, residents from across um, Market Street, living on Cushman Road, Morrow Road, Mapleton, and Falkland Street. Um, at this time, we'd like to defer to the but judge. Excuse me. At this time, we'd like to defer to the judgment of this board. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Annabella. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabella Gomes from the Brighton Nelson Improvement Association. We'd like to go on record and support. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. No additional raised hands. Okay. With that, may I have a motion? Uh, motion to approve. And I have a second. Second. Okay. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Fair also votes yes. Motion carries. Uh, can we take a 15 minute break? Thank you.